Hello folks, how you doing? Dave Mayo here from HackYourGut.com and today we're going to go over some interesting findings from a paper that was widely shared on the internet as proof that a carnivore diet is beneficial long term. However, when you dig into the data and don't just look at a social media post or just the abstract, you can see that there actually is evidence here that a carnivore diet long term, uh, meaning greater than six months and on average 14 months, led to an increase in coronary artery calcium score. This is a measure of the amount of plaque in your coronary artery. So this is a terrible result. Um, truth be told, it's hard to say about this result because there's some deep confounders with this type of evidence. So we're going to kind of discuss that, discuss the findings of the study, and overall just kind of learn a, a valuable lesson about uh, using information shared on social media or via people who are simply just reading an abstract as evidence for anything. So this paper was widely shared on social media. Uh, it was basically, you know, planting a flag. This is the first study on a carnivore diet long term, and it showed that a carnivore diet is perfectly healthy and there are no problems in it. But if you look at all the data and read the entire paper, you can see that this is wrong and that the, based on this evidence, uh, which isn't great evidence in the first place, this actually, a long-term carnivore diet will increase cardiovascular disease. Additionally, this is kind of data against the whole lean mass hyper responder uh, being a specific type of person with a high LDL cholesterol that is not getting a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So let's just talk about the study. Again, the name of the study, uh, if, if you're not familiar with it, Behavioral Characteristics and Self-Reported Health Status Among 2,029 Adults Consuming a Carnivore Diet. It's a large study, epidemiological. It's a survey-based study. Hey, did you do a carnivore diet? Um, how did your health outcomes change? Uh, to be in the diet, you had to be, you had to be in the study, you had to be on the diet for at least six months. On average, the participants were on the diet for 14 months. Uh, the average age of the patient was 44 years old, which is kind of important as well. Um, and it looked at various health outcomes. Uh, first and foremost, they looked at what a lot of people use a carnivore diet for. They looked at certain health issues that impact, negatively impact a person's quality of life, uh, gastrointestinal issues, muscular issues, skin issues, general well-being. They also looked at hemoglobin A1C, blood lipids, and weight. And they had some really interesting findings. Uh, there were uh, improvements in many issues. Uh, the GI, skin, and muscular issues, overall well-being actually seemed to improve, which is great. You don't want to feel cruddy. Uh, you don't want to have all these issues going on. Great that people felt better. There were improvements in hemoglobin A1C, uh, diabetes medication use as well. And this would make sense. A, a carnivore diet is a low-carb diet, so you're not going to get uh, a, a, like a high glycemic response from eating carbohydrates if you're not eating them in the first place. There were also some improved cardiovascular disease markers. Uh, specifically, there was an increase in HDL cholesterol. There were lower triglycerides. Um, however, there was a, a, an increase in LDL cholesterol, which is a bad cardiovascular disease marker. However, again, this is a great illustration of the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, but a supposedly um, a protected phenotype, which isn't really based on any evidence, uh, that if you have an increase in HDL cholesterol, uh, lower triglycerides and your glyce glycemia, your blood glucose responses are all improved. LDL cholesterol doesn't matter and it doesn't increase your risk for uh, cardiovascular disease. However, that is not what this study showed at all, uh, particularly when you actually look at all of the data. And, and that, that the reason this is problematic is because people did not see this information. They saw some Somebody share an image of, of this study. They saw somebody share the abstract and say, whoa, if you look at what this says uh, in the conclusion, which is contrary to common expectations, adults consuming a carnivore diet experienced few adverse effects, remember that, and instead reported health benefits and high satisfaction. Cardiovascular disease risk factors were variably effective. Put a pin in that as well. The generalizability of these findings and the long-term effects of this dietary pattern require further study. Could not agree more, 100% agree, uh, if we can find that this diet helps people resolve acute problems without increasing chronic problems, that would be fantastic. Or if we could find that it works well for a certain subset of people without causing long-term adverse health outcomes, then it's, uh, that would be good as well. So definitely want to research this more. But let's dig into the data and see something that wasn't really mentioned uh, in, in the uh, abstract at all, in the conclusions, and was definitely not mentioned when this was shared on social media. 
media. And this has to do with adverse effects and specifically uh, the variably affected cardiovascular disease risk factors. But before we do that, we have to talk about a, a, a measure of statistics known as the median. Now, you're probably familiar with what a mean is. The mean is the average value. So you take everybody's score, add it up, divide it by the number of participants, and you get the average or mean. However, in certain situations, it makes more sense to use a median. For example, if the uh, distribution is skewed more to the right or left, meaning most people had high scores or most people had low scores, you would want to use the median so that the number that you have statistically more, uh, is more representative of the uh, sample of the population that you're measuring. With that in mind, let's look at a table of the median changes. Uh, specifically, we're going to dive into uh, what is known as a CAC score, coronary artery calcium score, which is a, me a measure of the, um, uh, art uh, the uh, calcification of the coronary artery. So we can first look at this uh, when we look at weight, uh, BMI, uh, high-density high lipoprotein, triglycerides, hemoglobin A1C, even C-reactive protein. We saw improvements in uh, these measures. We saw improvements in most of these measures, but what happens when we kind of dig into that CAC score? So the CAC score here at the bottom, it's important to look at this for what it is. Um, we're going to kind of move over. They have scores. Um, and when we look at the scores, we're going to slide on over here. Again, CAC scores in the bottom. We're going to look first at the pre-diet, the uh, score. Uh, when we look at the median, we have two numbers. It is a 2 with a 55 in parentheses. And when we slide on over to the median uh, currently, meaning after the diet, the median is 0 with 81 in the parentheses. So if you look at this, you'll be like, wow. Actually, they went from a uh, median coronary artery, artery calcium score of 2 to 0, which is actually an improvement. They, so they, quote unquote, had less coronary artery calcium. However, there's a problem. And this is a problem inherent to self-collection. Not everybody had before and after measures of their coronary artery calcium score. Some people only had pre-diet measures. Some people only had post-diet measures. And other people had both. So what happened in these people who had both? So if we look here, uh, if we look at the very bottom, bottom here with the superscript three, it says medians and quartiles are given for the entire sample and in parentheses for participants with available pre and post diet measures. In other words, they were paired. These are the people we know had coronary artery calcium score before and after. This is effectively showing what's happening in people who undergo this diet, what the change in coronary artery calcium score would be. And these are the numbers in parentheses. So when we move uh, to the pre-diet, uh, people with paired scores had a 55 uh, as a coronary artery calcium score. And after, it actually increased to 81, which is a 50% increase, which is huge. In other words, in people consuming a carnivore diet on average for 14 months, coronary artery calcium score increased by 50%. That is a large uh, increase in coronary artery calcium score. Um, but there's kind of problems with this. Um, and it is problem inherent with this type of data. Self-report is full of bias. You're generally going to get people who are very pro a diet, so they're going to be more um, apt to report positive outcomes. The data is cobbled together, which is what we are seeing here. Uh, you only have some people with before and afters. This is the most important data. You really don't want to look at people who only have one or the other, especially if you can zero in on people who had it before and after, because it's really showing what, what's happening in these individuals. So in those with a before and after, after CAC score, it actually got worse with a carnivore diet. But there's other things we don't know. We don't know when their before score was. They might have had a pre-diet score, uh, CAC score from many years before. They could have literally had it right as it happened. But what we can see with this data is, at the very least, the carnivore diet did not improve their coronary artery calcium score. And in fact, it actually seemed to make it worse. We would have to compare this to uh, healthy controls. But this is certainly not an outcome you would want. Certainly, you would want to see improvements in uh, gut, skin, and muscular issues, uh, and the diet is helping you with that. But is it really worth it if it's hastening your death? So let's just kind of go upon an assumption. Let's assume this data is accurate and that these people had a score relatively close to before starting carnivore and right after they did it. We saw a 50% increase, and, and these people were kind of in the mild category, so they had mild coronary artery disease. 
If this trend follows through over the course of six years, these individuals would move from mild coronary artery disease to extensive coronary artery disease. This is certainly not something you would want. It's not a trade-off. Yes, you got gut issues, you have skin issues, you have mus muscular issues, but is that really worth uh, shortening your life because now you have extensive cardiovascular disease? That's completely up to you. Hard to make the argument that this data is evidence that, uh, that a, a, a long-term carnivore diet is fine and for your health. Uh, cardiovascular disease is a personal concern of mine. But additionally, this is kind of showing this idea uh, that the lean mass hyper-responder phenotype isn't really a beneficial phenotype at, at, at all. These people hit all of the marks. They're, yes, their LDL went up, but their triglycerides went down. Their HDL went up and their glycemia improved, and in fact, their CRP improved as well. So based on all this data, you would expect, based on the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype being protective, you would not expect to see your coronary artery calcium score increase, but that's exactly what we saw. This is not good evidence. The people who are sharing this certainly did not see this buried in the data. Uh, it's probably important to point out that I first became aware of this information uh, through um, Nick Hebert. He's the Nutrivore on Twitter. He shares a lot of interesting information. Yes, he is a vegan, but B, who cares? Because this is actually the data from a carnivore study. He's not giving any, you know, this is not like an opinion. This is literally buried within the data in this table right here. Um, so take that for what you will. I certainly would not use this information as proof that a carnivore diet is healthy. In fact, it is information that long term it's going to increase your cardiovascular disease risk by increasing coronary artery calcium. That's a much harder endpoint than looking at LDL cholesterol or HDL or triglycerides. And so um, take this for what you will. If you're on a carnivore diet and it's making you uh, feel better and giving you a better quality of life, that's something you're going to have to weigh the pros and cons to. If you're somebody who just wants to do a carnivore diet to do a carnivore diet or for weight loss, I would probably look elsewhere. Uh, I certainly would not want to do a diet that increases my risk for coronary artery calcium, which brings us back to the final point. As we mentioned, the average age was 44 in the study. You would expect everybody for the most part, to have a coronary artery score of zero anyway. That, that score should be zero in people under 50. Certainly there were some people over 50, so you would expect their scores to be elevated. However, that's besides the point. In people who had a before and after measure, it increased by 50% and that is not good. Thank you all very much for listening in. If you liked this video, found it interesting and want more like it, please subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to like and share us on social media. If you have any questions, comments, or constructive criticisms, please pop them in uh, the comment section below. We will, share the, uh, we will share the reference for this study in the uh, description uh, down below as well. Thank you very much and take care.